In this section we will talk about pressure changes and we'll start off with gases. Heuristic 31 says use a fan to raise the gas pressure from atmospheric pressure to as high as 10 kPa gauge. So generally what it means is whenever you can use a centrifugal fan. Uh, it's a nice uh, cheap and easy way to move gas. So this is what you'd use to move gas rather than compress gas because 10 kPa gauge is only about one meter of head and so it is essentially just when you want to blow something um, and it is the lowest pressure applications. This one has the one illustrated has got a nice big diameter so this would probably be capable of delivering a full 10 kPa gauge. Continued with, continuing with heuristic 31, use a blower or a compressor to raise the gas pressure to as high as 200 kPa gauge. So between 10 and 200 kPa gauge you would uh, one of the applications, for instance, would be to use a uh, to drive a fluidized bed, uh, where you need to actually blow gas right through the uh, bed of sand, and therefore you need more pressure than than the mere 10 kPa. And what's shown is a a side port blower. This is what we use in the pilot bay in Engineering 2 to drive the dual fluidized bed pyrolysis apparatus and uh, in, that, in that unit we also use a two-stage side port blower as shown here. And finally, continuing with Heuristic 31, use a compressor or a staged compressor system to attain pressures greater than 200 kPa gauge. So what we've got shown here is an air compressor. Uh, normally air compressors compress to about 800 kPa and therefore you need a staged compressor. Um, and the one shown is belt driven with a three-stage compressor. When we need to do stage compression, compression there is a maximum pressure that we can go to and that is about three bar pressure starting from one bar to go to about three bar pressure uh, that is the normal pressure range that you'd go to before you go to a next stage the maximum compression ratio is about four and therefore to go from one bar to four bar you will only need a single stage but from going from one bar to 16 bar you can use two stages if you need to go to 64 bar, you'll need three stages, and to 256, you need four stages. And that's the absolute minimum of stages. Um, so, And it also refers to a specific heat ratio of 1.4. So that is normal air, and uh, that specific heat ratio is important because it's, it, it describes the isentropic temperature rise as you compress the fluid or the gas. Uh, the, the more that the gas, the, the higher the gas temperature rises when you compress it, the, uh, the more stages that you'd need. So an example is the compressor that you did in the Aspen Tut, where the temperature rose to 1200 degrees without using interstage cooling. So generally you will use the same amount if you've got, for instance, a 1 to 256 bar compressor and you're using four stages, you would typically use the same amount of power going from 1 to 4 bar pressure as you would going from 4 to 16 bar pressure and so forth. So you would have four stages and each of them would use the same amount of pressure if the ratio of the pressures is the same in each of those stages. Intercooler pressure drop is about 15 kPa, 
which is relatively small, but also showing you that you need an intercooler between stages, and that is the whole idea of having separate stages. Moving over to liquid um, pressure changes. Um, for essentially, the idea is to use uh, centrifugal pumps whenever you can. So for heads up to 10, up to 1,000 meters, which is about 100 bar pressure. Remember, 10 meters of head is a, is one bar of pressure. So 100 bar of pressure, and flow rates in the range of 40 to 20,000 liters per minute. Use a centrifugal pump. Now that's a large range. So generally, the heuristic says use centrifugal pumps to pump liquids. 20,000 liters per minute to give an idea, a large swimming pool, a large domestic swimming pool of say five meters by 10 meters by two meters is 100,000 liters. So that would take at 20,000 liters per minute, it would take five minutes to fill such a, a, a swimming pool. So that is a large range of both pressure and volume. For high heads, up to 6,000 meters. Now that's a very high pressure. We're talking of 600 bar pressure and flow rates up to 2,000 liters per minute. So that is a relatively low flow rate, but extremely high head. Use a reciprocating pump. So that is the illustration on the left hand side. A reciprocating pump means it has pistons that are compressing the liquid um, and pushing it up to a higher pressure. Less common um, are axial pumps, which is the middle illustration, which simply has propellers that propel the, the water. So this is the equivalent of a fan in terms of gas compression. Uh, it is simply there to move the water. So those heads are not particularly high, just over one bar pressure, but flow rates in the range from 80 to 400,000 liters per minute. 400,000 liters per minute is a lot. If we think of our swimming pool of 100,000 liters, uh, it would fill a swimming pool of that size within 15 seconds. And then thirdly, we have rotary pumps with heads of up to 900 meters, uh, nine, 90 bar pressure, and flow rates in the range of four to 6,000 liters per minute. Uh, they, are, they are not so uh, they are not so common, simply because they are they are um, positive displacement pumps. If you have a look at the illustration you have a, a screwed conveyor which acts in such a way that you are positively displacing the water um, and therefore you can get high pressures but they are not uh, very high flow rates um, so these are used typically in agricultural uh, uh, scenarios uh, where you need to pump water f uh, up to a uh, to up to a, high, a reservoir at a high at a high height on a mountain, for instance. Moving on to moving on to heuristic thirty four, we are looking at liquid pressure drops for liquid flow. Assume a pipeline pressure drop of forty kPa per hundred meter of pipe and a control valve pressure drop of at least 70 kPa. Now these are quite high pressure drops and the reason that it's okay to have high pressure drops in liquid pipelines is because we are using centrifugal pumps. To give you an idea, a normal swimming pool centrifugal pump uh, will have a pressure drop of, uh, will have a, a head, will pump to a head of about uh, 20 meters, 20 or 30 meters, in other words, two or three bar pressure head. And um, 
that's that's using only 750 watts of power 0.75 kilowatts of power um, and that can be going at a decent flow rate uh, that will fill a 50 millimeter tube so it is relatively cheap to pump liquids as we've said often before and therefore that drop in pressure of 40 kPa per 100 meters of pipe or a control valve pressure drop of 70 kPa is relatively small and inexpensive in terms of power required to move that liquid. Again, uh, for every 10 meters of rise in elevation compared to normal pressure drop in the pipe, assume a pressure drop of 100 kPa. So that is, that is what we said several times in the past. Alright, heuristic 35. Consider the use of an expander for reducing the pressure of a gas or a pressure recovery turbine for reducing the pressure of a liquid when more than 15 kilowatts for gas and 100 kilowatts for liquid. So on the left, the illustration on the left is a, a gas expander um, and then you can attach a generator to the shaft and so if you have if you can recover more than 15 kilowatts from a gas as it's being expanded uh, then it makes it worthwhile economically so these numbers 15 kilowatts and 110 kilowatts refer to the economic viability of putting in a gas expander or a liquid turbine so if we have a look at the left on the right hand uh, illustration that is a liquid turbine you can put it into a liquid stream and if you can recover as much as 110 kilowatts or more, then it's worth putting in a liquid turbine and recovering that energy. Right, now we go on to vacuum systems, heuristic 36. To reduce the amount of gas sent to the vacuum system if its temperature is greater than 40 degrees, add a condenser using cooling water before the vacuum system. So in other words, first let's understand what a vacuum system is. You've got your process system under vacuum. So this is used for, um, for certain filters or it can be used in a um, vac vacuum distillation. Um, and then you would have to use a compressor to go from the low pressure up to atmospheric pressure where you expel whatever gases are in the system and that will keep the process system under vacuum so in other words a vacuum pump is a is a normal pressure pump going from the low pressure of the vacuum out to atmosphere at one bar at absolute now because the volumes involved in vacuum systems are so high the volume flow rate Integral V dot DP equals the amount of work that you require. Therefore, vacuum systems need a lot of work. And therefore, it's imperative that you should, you should reduce the temperature to as low as you can without using refrigeration uh, before you go into your vacuum system. When you need to get down to 1.3 kPa and gas flow rates up to 5 cubic meters per second at the inlet to the vacuum system, use a liquid ring vacuum pump. So these are liquid ring vacuum pumps are what you'd find in the laboratory, like on the top right hand side. Um, and uh, they, they work by using, a, as, as suggested, a liquid ring to make sure that the, that there's that there's no leakage, and um, the so this is this is what you'd generally use uh, as as if you don't need a very high flow rate. Okay, five cubic meters per second is 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 a is a lot of flow, but of course it's not a lot of mass flow because this is at vacuum. One point three kPa is sort of one one point three percent of atmospheric pressure. A 
For pressures down to 0.3 kPa, which is about the lowest you'd expect to go, and gas flow rates up to 500 cubic meters per second. Remember, that's about 100 times more than the vacuum pumps can do. Use a steam jet ejector system. So you would use a three stage to get down to 0.3 kPa. If you only need to get down to between 2 and 15 kPa, you can use a two stage. And you only need one stage to get down to between 15 and 100 kPa absolute. It says include a direct contact condenser between stages. That means that you would actually spray water in to condense the steam uh, between stages. And I'll include a, a diagram of a three-stage uh, ejector system on the, on the next page. Right, heuristic 38. For a three-stage steam, steam jet ejector system used to achieve a vacuum of 2 tall or 0.3 kPa, you need 100 kilograms of 700 kPa steam per kilogram of gas that's, that's ejected. So there we have our vacuum at 0.3 kPa going into the first ejector. Um, and you need 100 kilograms of steam at 700 kPa, which is low pressure steam. And uh, eventually you'll be ejecting one kilogram of gas out of the system.